Hey guys, it's Miranda Hughes here. Um, I do have another video. I'm going to make this as quick as possible because I actually have somewhere to be. And I'm actually not looking all dungy today, so thank you. Glory be to God. Been a rough couple weeks, but uh, finally feeling like myself again and making some progress. So thank you all for bearing with me. And also while I'm at it, if you guys have not yet, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. All right. So I'm just going to jump into it because like I said, I got to make this as quickly as possible. So keep up. I'm sorry. If you got to rewatch this, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to kind of go right through it. But anyways, um, the video that God wants me to do today is, well, the, the video or the music video that he gave me was The One by Gary Allen. And I have not heard this song in years and it just kind of came to me about a couple weeks ago and I actually forgot about it and God brought it back to my attention. So I'm going to do this one today. But anyways, um, so this is not a very long song at all. This is actually very, very short. Um, I will find the link as usual and post it down in the comments so y'all can go check that out. But anyways, let's get into it. Again, it's called The One and it is by Gary Allen. This is a country song. Like I said, I love country, so I guess God gives me a lot of country songs. However, there is quite a few that are not country, so you'll like those ones if you don't like country. But anyways, here we go. So this is, let's see. I think the chorus is only repeated like once, but I'll still go through it. But anyways, here we go. No rush, though I need your touch. I won't rush your heart until you feel on solid ground, until your strength is found, girl. So again, this is not exactly just for women. This is for men or women. So if you hear the word girl, just if you're a man watching this, replace it with boy. You know, like this could be a girl talking to you too. So um, the point is, is your prodigal. This is what's on their mind and in their heart. This is what they're feeling, how they're starting to feel towards you. And they're kind of like in this state where they're like, you know, I really want to be with you, but I'm not really sure if you know that I'm the one for you. Like they're, they might be aware, but at the same time, because like I said, God's speaking to them just like he's speaking to you. However, because they're, this is mainly for people who have zero means zero contact with their prodigal or previous spouse and y'all are getting back together. If you have zero contact, meaning you're not speaking at all, and maybe you guys aren't on social media or you were and something happened, this is what it means. Like you guys have zero contact. You have no idea how they're feeling, what they're thinking. They have no idea what you're feeling or thinking. So this is where, you know, God has me. Um, he'll give me a song and then I do my best to break it down in the way that God broke it down to me to be able to give it to you. So, and again, this is perfect to pray over, you know, your own life. Make sure that you take this back to God. Um, it's not that you don't believe what I say. It's just, I only know in part. So again, I don't know who all is watching. So I don't know who all this pertains to, but what God kind of revealed to me is this is for people kind of like me where you're waiting on your prodigal to return, but you just don't know what's going on in their mind. Or what is going through their heart and their head and vice versa. Like they don't know anything about what's going on with me. Other than what they've seen on social media. Um, and I don't blast anyone. I don't put a whole lot of, you know, negative things out there. Or I don't even talk a whole lot about my life. Just what God tells me I'm allowed to put on there. So, um, yeah, I just had to clear that up. But anyways, again, this is for men or women. Um, it's the whole point is just your prodigal is basically trying to let you know or God's trying to let you know how your prodigal feels right now about you so like I said this first part is no rush though I need your touch I won't rush your heart until you feel on solid ground until your strength is found girl so what God gave to me about this is your person is eager to be with you but they don't believe you want them they actually are afraid of you like they excuse me they actually feel a little intimidated because they're like you know they embarrassed you they hurt you they did all kinds of the things and now they're like catching feelings for you because God's you know moving he's on the move and he's 
you know, showing them who their real spouse is or who the real person for them to marry is. And it's not the person that they've been dating or been talking to or lingering with. And so now that they're starting to see that you're it, they're like, well, dang, like, you know, there's been so much time and gaps. I don't know how this person's going to feel if I reach out to them. And so um, that's why they don't believe that you want them. But anyways, after everything they put you through, you know, which I just mentioned, they are going to be patient and not try to push you to trust them right away. They understand they need to go slow as your faith and your strength is built back up in your life. Like you're not just going to automatically trust them. Like, you know, even Joseph, when his brothers betrayed him and stuff and they had to go to him for food, like even Joseph had to kind of test them a little bit and he had to kind of take it slow and steady because it's like, look what they did to him. So same thing. It's not that your person's horrible. It's just they didn't know who you were and they didn't, you know, they weren't as close to God. They didn't understand their purpose. They may have been lost. So now that God's bringing, you know, understanding and bringing provision and bringing insight to them about their purpose, who they are, their worth and all this stuff and the plans in their life that he has for them, you're included in that plan. And now they're like, oh my gosh, I ran away from this person. So they understand that now when they come back to you, there's going to be a lot of building to be done. Okay. I mean, God's done the most as far as fixing and healing your heart on both of your guys' ends. But when it comes to you guys like being reunited, it's like y'all are still going to have to work and build things together. That means you're going to have to build trust. You're going to have to build up your guys' faith. You're going to have to like kind of adjust from going from single to being in a friendship that will lead into a healthy relationship that will then lead into, you know, however long it is, a healthy engagement that will then lead into a beautiful, wonderful, healthy marriage. There are stages. This is going to take a process. This is going to take time. This is not for you to just go boom, 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 just because y'all know you're supposed to be together. It's like, no, there's still going to be some setbacks, some trials, some misunderstandings. There's still going to be some adjustments. So just disclaimer, if y'all are at that point where it's like God's been trying to get you to be very forgiving and compassionate and understanding and you're having a hard time with it like I had with a couple of my family members that's why because God's trying to soften your heart enough so that when this person comes back you're you'll have your guard up but it's not going to be like it has been in the past where you don't let anyone in at all like this is going to be I'm going to let you in but there's going to be there's going to be a uh a border or there's going to be boundaries there's going to be you know like if we're talking on the phone we're not going to talk all night long this is going to be like you get an hour tops or you get two hours you know a day or something like that um there needs to be a lot of respect that's you know shown in the relationship early on and so you know i know that's not part of the song but this is just part of the message that god just really wanted me to break down to you guys um i didn't know i was going to be talking about that but like i said this is god's message and platform he's just using my voice to speak his message so anyways like your person they're going to understand he or she that they need to go slow with you as your faith and your strength is being built back up as you begin to trust them it's, it may take a little while you know it's not going to be the first day first week or even the first month that you're going to trust them it may take you know a couple months before you begin to to realize that okay they're serious they're not going to run away from me like they actually want this like i do so, and that's another reason why you shouldn't rush anyways. <clears throat> so anyways, the next one or the next section is I'll fill those canyons in your soul like a river lead you home and I'll walk a step behind in the shadows so you shine. Just ask it will be done and I will prove my love until you're sure that I'm the one. Okay, so with this, your person is going to have no problem with proving to you that they're not going to run away. So we just kind of talked about that a little bit and they're not going to run away from you anymore and that they want to be in your life as much as you will let them. So again, that's where you do have, you know, a little bit of the power, I guess. Um, and it's not to be on a power trip or power hungry, you know, don't abuse your power. It's like, don't let them just walk all over you. Don't let them just walk all in and repeat everything that God worked so hard to teach you guys like don't be sleeping together 
Don't be, you know, getting by doing other nasty things that y'all shouldn't be doing. Because it's like, no, you're starting grand spanking new, okay? You're starting from the ground up. Which means y'all are going to be starting over. Like, if they don't have your phone number, you don't give it to them right away just because they're your person and they're asking to be back in your life. No, let them work for it. You know, if this is a, if you're a woman and a man's trying to get your phone number, if it is you being a man and you, you know, your person, a, a woman reaches out to apologize or whatever, don't hand her your phone number right off the bat just because you're eager to talk to her. Like, no, like, you know, go sit down and talk face to face for at least an hour or more in a public place. This goes for all y'all public place and myself included, and then as you guys get to know each other a little bit, you know, if at the end of the conversation, y'all want to talk a little bit more, you know, if God puts it in your heart to give them, you know, the phone number, then so be it. Like I said, you're not exactly following me, but you're supposed to be praying to God and asking him what the best instructions are for your life and your situation. But I do know for most women, God would probably prefer that you let the man give you the phone number or not give the phone number, but you let him work for your phone number. Don't just assume just because he's the person that you're supposed to marry or that he's coming back that you just handing your phone number is just going to make it all better. It's not. Okay. Um, that is a step in progress, but like give it a couple weeks to a couple months before he gets your phone number like it's there's nothing wrong with that it's not too slow um because here's what's going to happen is you start moving too quickly even in the little tiny things like that think about it if if someone is trying to um wiggle their way back into your life even if it is the right person there's a reason you know that they're going to respect you more when you take things slow and you actually like think about how is this going to affect me? Is this the right time? Let me pray about it. Like that speaks volumes, not in general, just as you being a person. But I mean, for you letting this person back into your life, like it's like, I don't have a problem with you coming back in my life. It's just, we're going to do this God's way and we're going to do it slower. Because the last time we moved way too fast. Some of us had one night stands. Some of us, you know, just rushed the gun too soon and we just threw out threw ourselves at the person like to the point where it did lead up to a one night stand or we were just in a relationship with someone and the person that you know we're supposed to be with and it was just way too fast way too soon and God was like no y'all should have been talking and just being friends in the beginning and then things escalated and you know here we are today um after all this time so don't know who that's for I know I needed to hear that um but that's kind of like what God's talking about is Go slow. Like, <laughs> your person is willing to fill in those canyons, like the cracks and crevices of your heart that's been damaged. He's willing, like, that's God's job, but your person is willing to make it right and make it better for you. And they have no problem proving to you that they're willing to step up and let you know that they're going to be here. They're not going to run away. Um, and again, the second part of that is, um, I'll walk a step behind in the shadow so you shine. Uh, they will let you be in the spotlight and do what it is God called you to do and not sabotage your purpose or career. They want to help you win and shine just like you will do for them. So again, if they're living in their purpose and they're doing what it is that God called them to do, they're going to be busy doing that alongside with being busy helping you build your dream and build you up as well. Because guess what? Two are better than one. When you are back in your life, are, when you're back in the life of your person and the person's back in your life, you guys are going to be doing incredible things. This is bigger than y'all. So, you know, you both are going to be help building each other up. You're not going to be tearing each other down. You're going to be lifting each other up. You're going to be help building whatever it is that God had called you guys to build individually and together as a couple, because there's some things that you can't build until your person comes into your life. Um, that's just how God designed it. Okay. The next part is somebody else was here before he treated you unkind and broken wings need time to heal before a heart can fly. Um, excuse me. Other than the pain your person caused you, they are aware that they, that there may be some triggers or certain things 
that you are working through that someone else had done to you. Um, they understand, excuse me, that healing takes time. So again, back like at the top when they said that no rush, though I need your touch. Like they want the relationship, but they also understand that healing takes time and that they need to do this the right way, which is God's way. And they're not going to try to push you past anything you don't want to do. Like, if you're just comfortable being friends with them for, like, you don't have to say, like, you know, let's just be friends for, like, two months and then start dating. Like, you don't have to say that. Like, just say, you know, like, right now, I just, you know, I like you. Um, I'm trying to do what it is that God wants me to do. And if he's told you that we need to be in a relationship like he's told me, then I guess we're on the same page. So let's just start there. Let's start over. Let's get to know each other talk on the phone if you if that's what god tells you to do if not just continue to talk on messenger in dms um video chat do all that stuff for a good month or so and then when god nudges you and tells you it's the right time to start talking on the phone for just casual conversation every day you know whether that be one week two weeks or one or two months from then from when you guys first reunite then do that that way it builds because you're, you're, it's a process, you know, um, you want this per, this person that's coming back in your life really needs to understand and they already do that. They know they messed up and that they have a lot to prove in order to not like, it's not like earning your love because they're not deserving of you. It's, they did do you wrong and God wants to make sure that they know that it's like, they can't just show up and then that's all they have to do to win you over it's like no there's a lot more that goes into it besides that and if you just hand them your phone number and you do whatever it is that they want to do and you don't really stick to your um your beliefs with god and what it is that he's telling you to do and you don't include god in the relationship as this person comes back then there's a very high chance that you're going to do a repeat of everything that you went through a couple years ago or however long it's been and it's just going to cause a lot more heartache and pain and delays. And nobody wants that. Okay. Neither one of you do. I know I don't. So do it differently this time. And they're aware that that's what's going to take in order to be successful and win with you is they're going to have to do things different. They're going to have to go slower. They're going to have to be patient. They understand that you're working things out and that someone else besides them has probably hurt you and they need to realize that that is why they also need to be going slow because it may not be something that they did. It may be something that someone else did, but if they love you and they're really there for you, they're going to help you through that. Just like there's going to be things about them that may trigger them that has nothing to do with you. But if you love them, you're going to help them work it out and show them how to cope better, how to heal more or whatnot. So I guess so much for this being short. So I'm sorry, guys. Um, the next one is, I'll fill, it's the same one, I'll fill those canyons in your soul like a river lead you home, and I'll walk a step behind in the shadow so you shine. Just ask, it will be done, and I will prove my love until you're sure that I'm the one. Um, your prodigal has not made a move to reach out to you because they are scared of being rejected by you, as we mentioned before. Um, they're not 100% certain that you want them in back in your life. Um, if they were to reach out to you, basically they're just afraid you're going to say no, or you're going to freak out or whatever it is. Cause again, you guys haven't talked in forever. So they have no idea what you're thinking or feeling. Um, and preferably they would actually, your prodigal would rather know firsthand that you want them before they were to reach out, but that's not what God is wanting them to do. He wants them to take a leap of faith and have a moment where they just trust God and just regardless of whether they know how you think or feel about them for them to just step out and just do it anyways and just be bold and go for it and ask you out or ask you to um, forgive them or ask you if you can have a chance to, uh, you know, for them to apologize to you and you talk to them, you know, face to face, like whatever it is that they need to do, like God just wants them to do it bold and do it. They can do it afraid, but they need to be bold and just do it anyways. You know, even if they don't know, 100% the outcome or 100% how you feel about them. Um, the next verse is trust in me and you'll find a heart so true. All I want to do is give the best of me to you and stand beside you. 
when you are able to finally trust in them, and it's not completely, it's just when you're starting to see that they've changed, um, it's not only that you'll see that they change, but also that they changed in heart. So um, that includes their behavior, their actions, their words, their choices, things like that. Um, and even just how in general they talk to you or how serious they are of keeping the word of getting back to you on time and not leaving you hanging, that kind of thing. But they also truly want you to have the best life and the best of them. So you will get to see that, you know, and, and time tells all. So the more time you give it, that's another reason to go slower because that's how you're really going to be able to truly tell if this person's for you and if they're supporting you and loving you and stepping up. You know, because when you're rushing, you you don't really get to see that stuff. You kind of fly right past it. All the red flags and all that. So, yeah. And then the very last section of this is just ask, it will be done, and I will prove my love until you're sure that I'm the one. So, they're not going to give up on proving that they are the one for you. Um, if you need reassurance, you know, obviously pray to God about what it is that you're needing first before you talk to your person about it. If you're feeling a little insecure or uncertain of something. And again, there's nothing wrong with you feeling that way because, I mean, they were gone for the last couple of years and this is going to take time. It is going to take healing. It's going to take a lot of, you know, faith and building trust, building faith as you two coming together as a couple again. Um, or if you guys haven't dated before, like it was just kind of like a meet and greet kind of thing where I met my person for like a day and then it was like I didn't hear from them even though we talked online here and there and then it was like nothing. So if you have a situation like that, you're, it's going to take a little while for you to build trust that they're not going to leave you hanging like that and that they're not going to ghost you or they're not going to, you know, whatever. So if they kind of get quiet and they haven't said anything for a couple of days and they've been talking to you consistently for like three or four and then they just, you don't hear anything, you might start to feel like, oh my gosh, like, is this going to be a repeat? And this is why God wants you that if you need reassurance from your person to first take it to God in prayer and then ask your person based off of whatever God tells you to do. If he tells you to do something, do it. If he tells you to just be still, please be still and just trust God in that moment. Um, but go ahead and ask whatever questions it is that you have for your person. Just This is why you also need to go to God is just make sure you're asking those questions at the right time. Um, you're just going to need God the whole way through with this because it's gonna it's bigger than you. Um, and basically whatever it is that you ask, it will be done. So if you need your person to call you by a certain time every day, um, more than likely they're going to do it just because they know that if that's what it takes for you to feel like you are comfortable with them and that you trust them, then they're going to step up and they're going to meet that need. Um, and this is not to control or manipulate. It's just if you need to talk to them every day because you need to know that they're serious and that they are interested in you, then that's something that needs to be addressed and it needs to be done. Um, if you need them to have a date night once a week to show that they're interested in you and to prove that, you know, they're being serious about you, or if you need them to take down a second Facebook profile picture or profile picture, a second profile or whatever it is that they have, um, a second account, if you know, they've been using it just for like, basically kind of like a bait page, I guess, ask them to take it down. Like it's things like that where you're going to have to ask your person you know, I'd feel more comfortable with us dating if, you know, you took that down or I'd feel more comfortable dating you if I knew that you were more interested in me um, and you were consistent with it. Um, and again, this is where you guys are talking and you're getting to know each other. You're taking it slow. So you may not be dating right off the bat, but this is where you talk about what it would be like dating and kind of what the requirements are, or what you're wanting, needing or expecting and doing this like in the very beginning when they come back is going to be way more crucial and way more beneficial than it would be waiting until they mess up and then blowing up. It's like, no, like put it out there on the table, what you're wanting, what you're needing, because they're going to have to do that too. And not only that, it's just also healthier. So, um, and then the last thing God wanted me to say, and I, I know it's in Matthew, so please forgive me. I don't remember the exact verse, but I know Steve Harvey talks a lot about it and it's very true. And, the other point to the last part where it says, just ask, it will be done. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, you have not because you ask not. And that's actually very true. You know, like I said, if you need your person to go on a date with you 
at least once a week or once every two weeks or something for some of you if it's once a month i mean because if you all have really busy lives or whatever whatever it is like you need to ask it because if you don't ask then you really won't receive it and the biggest kicker between this is some things you need to ask god first before you ask your person just because god may give you a better solution to the problem than what your person can because you got to realize your person is still a person they're still going to make mistakes they're still going to be confused sometimes they're still not always going to have the right answers just like you so have some compassion you know on that part and just remember that god is the one bringing this all together you guys are just being obedient and taking the steps in faith and doing what it is that he's called you to do and the rest of it, like I said, God will continue to lead you guys with each step. But I hope this really helped you guys. Um, I actually do have to get going, but I love you guys. I prayed over all of you this morning. So I hope God blesses you all tremendously and have a wonderful day, evening, morning, night, wherever you're at. And God bless. All right. Love you guys. Bye.